What's up guys? Jordan from Bennett's Customs. Yet again, another race car episode. Um, we're, we're, we're narrowing down the list, I think. And uh, the days are narrowing down too. But we're uh, getting there, I think. Getting a bit, you know, a bit... Uh, ooh. Schwinkter is doit. On this episode, going to cover mounting the tank. World War II oxygen tank used in the bombers. Fully stainless, and I think it's going to be like we can't. We haven't actually filled it up yet to measure, but I believe it's probably around 25 to 30 liters. I'm hoping more on the 30 liter side, but that's okay. Anyways, as you've seen uh, in previous clips about how we're going to do it with the little fuel door um, on the side and we already got a pickup off the bottom which is perfect and we got our nice little breather tube here that we'll be able to do some copper lining with. So this is going to basically fix in right behind me like that with enough room between the seat and the tank hopefully for a battery or battery somewhere. I haven't figured out where that's gonna go. But what I did was, I made a hoop, and that hoop, move all the two wells. Um, what I have is this little hoop that I just bent up. This is out of the 38.1 mil um, speedway tubing. And what I'm going to do is put it right around like that. I'm actually going to cut this and just open it up a bit. I kind of screwed up my measurements by 10 mil. So it's going to go like that. And then we're going to just have some uh, leather or something, some strapping, and then some flat bar that will kind of wrap up um, in two pieces. And then we'll just have like a sleeve with a bolt going through it on um, both sides and that'll just hold it in and then this is going to sit basically like that the seat will be here um, and then we'll be able to just do like a little this will have like an attachment and straight through the back of the body I'll be able to put like a little push bar on the back of it and we'll tie this in to the frame just so it's all kind of structure structurally um, sound you know we want to make sure that this is nice and strong but I think this looks gonna work I didn't want to do a bunch of welding to this and make tabs and stuff off of it because I just really like the kind of patina that it has I don't want to touch it at all I just want to leave it so if anything I mean I will have to cut one hole in it to put the neck in but that's okay um, other than that we're gonna get straight into it because we are limited on time
what we have here is a little bit of 40 by 5 mil flat bar. And what I've done is I've made a clamp that goes all the way around and bolts through and is nice and tight. So I need to make two of those. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Kind of looks like a little minion with a head torch on. Um, front Model A brake drum piece that I cut off the race car. This is what I'm using to wrap the steel around. It's actually the same diameter, outside diameter, of the oxygen bottle, which was perfect. Um, so I'm just going to wrap it around. And what I've used for the um, sleeve tubing, what you'd call it, is the old steering shaft that I had left over because it's got a nice thick wall on it. So. 7 16 bolt goes straight through or half inch sorry so i just weld that on and then i cut it and then i'll just dress these edges maybe drill some holes but probably not because i just want to get this one done so what we're going to do is just set up a few clamps I'm going to manually with no heat just pull it all the way around clamp it tack it in place then we'll weld this in cut that, let it spring out, and then we'll just pull it around, put the bolt through and slide it on. Probably a bit hot, but basically, I'd say basically a lot, I think. This is, ouch, yeah, she's hot. I should just keep the gloves on. I'll just grab this. No, I won't. I'm just going to put this on. A slip roller? Damn. Would have made this job 1,000 times faster, but. Model A cut drum and lots of clamps and manipulation. I got it there. And it works. So I'm happy with it. Just want to get it started. It's kind of a bit off ground, but I think it doesn't really matter because once I think the other one turned out way better, but Let's just get it onto here. So, hopefully, similar to the same setup. Yep. And what I'll probably end up doing is I'll use a little bit longer of a bolt. And I'll try. I'd like to get some leather, um, 
leather strapping to go in between the metal and the actual tank itself, just to add a little bit of insulation. Square it up after, but let's just suck it up and see what it, see what it does. Could use like a bit of 50 mil by 3 mil rubber. That would work. Lots of ways I could have done this, but I'm just making do with what I got tonight. It's late. I just want to try and achieve something. What I'm going to do is recut this. I'm going to open it up. This is going to go around it like that. I could almost just leave that just like that and weld it. Have it a bit off center, you know? What, what rules out there are saying it's got to be dead center? Yeah, so I might just do that. Something like that. Hello, Liza. How do you do? I'm writing you a letter. I hope it reaches you. I know it's been a long time since you heard from me. I'm still kicking around here in Tennessee. I heard you got a new place I heard you got a new job I heard you got a haircut And it looks real nice Are you ever lonely? Do you ever think of me? I heard you got a new name I hope it treats you right And before you toss this letter there's something that I've got to say An aeroplane Shooting across the sky Can surely take your body to A new place for a while But some things stay No matter where you go Okay, this is what I've come up with. So, as you can see, it's off center. If I go like that, which is kind of what I wanted. Um, seat's gonna be behind here. These will be on the sides. And then what I should be able to do is build a little kind of hoop off here. And then that will hold the um, push bar off the end. So uh, the reason I've done it offset, two things. One, I wanted to have a guard for the bottom fuel um, pickup, just, and then the diff is kind of right here. So I wanted to make sure that there was gonna be no issues with the um, torque tube ever coming up and hitting the tank. Uh, second is I wanna, uh, these are not tight as I want to tack them into place where they are so that when I go to put in a bit of uh, rubber or leather between here, I'll be able to tighten it right up. And if you can imagine, this is going to be welded on both sides here. So it's going to not really do much pulling here, but it will pull this down. So the reason I've done it off center as well is because once this is tacked into the bar, those straps, when this bit gets pinched, it should push the tank down tight along the bottom here as well. So that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve. So I think it'll work. Um, I think it's gonna look really cool. I'm just gonna do a couple passes. I tried using the TIG welder on this stuff after I cleaned it like a ton and I was still getting heaps of porosity, which was really annoying. Um, so I ended up just using the MIG. So. I'll do the same. I'm not too phased by it. It's all going to get painted black anyways, but I just really like using the, the TIG welder and getting a nice pass, but I'll do the same with the MIG. 
So let's get this tacked into place and then we'll build our straps that are going to come off here and um, we'll get this thing tacked into the car. All my friends tell me she's the one that got away but you never left me like a ghost you stay there's nothing else worth thinking of when you find the Surely take your body to a new place for a while But some things stay No matter where you go Do you still love me, Liza? So right now I just got the cheap and easy Eastwood tube notcher in the drill press. Works a treat. Um, and one little thing too is when I used to notch a ton of stuff for like K members or bumpers or any you know sliders for four wheel drives, um, you'd have to you know whatever your length is I would always have to kind of get a grinder in there and trim off the excess before getting this to pass all the way through because it would it would hit the top um, so usually what I do is is um, you know there's there's our a really nice notch and what I'll do is I'll just go say if that's our measurement and our measurement is 160 mil that's the length of this to the inside where it's going to contact and I've added 15 mil so I cut it at 175 and then that was able to actually have the piece you know when I when the hole saw went through it it actually separated so I didn't have to lift it up and and notch it out so if you get it pretty close you'll be able to do one full pass without having to notch it and as you can see on the back wall that's good enough like once I kind of bevel the edge a little bit that'll be perfect so we'll get the other one cut and we'll get these things cleaned up and ready to install. Thank you. 
Okay, so here's here's my idea. I wanted to utilize this. Um, I wanted to utilize this door out of the, the 47 Mercury rear fender, and I thought it'd be really cool. I got this wicked little cap from G Wiz Cycles Alvar East. Um, it's vented, which is also cool, but I'll probably put another one on the top in that in that fitting. But basically, I was just sitting around for a motorcycle project. Fits this beautiful piece of two inch stainless. And what I'm gonna do is literally just weld it like that and call it a day. And I think it'll look really neat. So that one, Needs a bit of a trim up. Let me just see if this one fits a bit better. No, they're both equal. 22 and a half degrees. So I just gotta modify it slightly to make it work. But ideally, that's kind of what we're after. And then you're gonna shut the door, won't see anything, flip it up, pull it out, fill your fuel. And then, you know, we're getting an ample amount. Like, hopefully we don't have much slosh back, but who cares? Who knows? I don't. I don't know the world. I don't know anything. But that's basically it. Something like that. Welded straight in. So what I need to do is just take off a bit more of that angle. And I think we should be laughing. <laughs> got it mounted, we got our hole. It's all cleaned out on the inside. I just flipped it out and, and um, got all the, the swarf out of it. Um, so she's ready to go. I'm just gonna leave it there to weld it. It'll be nice and easy. And right now, what I'm doing is I just got my piece here and I'm just gonna weld this cap flange onto it now. So I'll do that, let that cool down, then we'll mock it up, weld it, and put the cap on. It's really nice in behind the seat and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cap both these sides off they 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 share each other so and what I'm gonna do is I'll run some copper down into that one and a little bit up with a breather on this side so it'll actually kind of do this motion which would be kind of a neat idea um, but yeah I reckon it looks really cool and then we got it right here. 
So that's it. So cap out, fill up, cap back in, away you go. Okay, so one thing is we have the seat hoop that comes around and is fixed uh, at a 90 degree, um, you know, just a little short piece that's, that's in there. Um, and the only thing that's holding all this weight is this just welded here. I was gonna make like a big gusset and you know, try and fully gusset it all up. I don't think it's very necessary if I tie this and this together. So what I did was I made a, an angle, I'm not actually sure what this angle is because the degree finder on my JD squared bender is uh, no bueno. Uh, so I've just made up what I think is close to a 45 degree. And what I think I'm gonna do is come up t um, tight to that right at the top and then I'll cap this off. And what I think I'm gonna do with this as well is have that copper line drill and tap and run that line into there and use that as my, my um, breather for my fuel. But what I think I'm gonna do is just tie this into here. So essentially it'll be back a little bit farther, kind of something like that. And this is gonna tie this in to this, this to that. And it's gonna be toit, very, very toit. So we're gonna try and do that right now. Come all you young rounders And a story I'll tell Of the promise of heaven And the warning of hell but Take heed where you ramble Or too soon you will go Way up on the hill flowers grow well, he met in the springtime the sun sang two star crossed lovers in the still melting snow where the loving was little top pieces just to fill them in I'll probably just leave that hole there for now maybe I'll tap it for a mount for something but those came from there. I just hole sawed these out so it didn't look like a pig nose so much. Um, and then those are what I just hole sawed out. So I'm going to tack and do two passes on those. Where the laughter would flow and the fiddle would play. Where well, the folks called it wrong. But hell, it seemed all right In the sun-painted picture In the daytime So we've got the rear tank basically finished. Pieces are um, welded in. Once the chassis flipped over, I'll be able to finish welding it. Uh, and then the only other two bends I'm just gonna put in for now um, is just two of these. So I just went and bent two 90 degree ones. I'm just going to trim them down and probably just mount those something similar like that. And basically what that's going to do is um, just help support this main, um, you know, kind of the cowl hoop, I'll call it, uh, that holds the steering. But there's not a lot of support this way. So I want to be able to put these in and um, yeah, just to help support it all. And then eventually if I want to, I can tie this into that and do a hoop and do a bit on the back if I want to. But for now, I'm gonna cut these. Um, I'll just tube notch the, this one, cut that one 90 degrees, drop it down and probably sit it right about there, right in the sweet spot and uh, get these welded in. Well, the air was so sky was so blue Before she could see them The laughter she knew She heard two shots ring out Down in the town There was three on the hillside But on 
only one headed down I was just a baby But I remember that day When I walked up the hillside Saw two mounds of corn All right, so we got everything mounted basically fully welded in a couple bits when when I flipped the frame over we got our two pieces that hold the cowl steering hoop I'll call it um, fixed in so now that's just really rigid which is great and the other thing I'm doing right now which I'll show a little bit more in detail on the other side is the rear radius arm I did not like the way that it was sitting prior um, it had too much slope so it was already like loaded if that makes sense and um, what I want to do is I just measured the in between drilled this out and this is the old bung or this was the bung that this welds into and it was kind of shaped very similar to this one so I just cut all the meat off I threw it in the lathe and spun it down. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just cut a couple more holes on the inside of the frame um, to be able to gain access to this so that I can weld it on the inside and on the outside. This is gonna lift up and the best thing about this is it's directly in line with the pivot, um, both vertically and horizontally. So now we shouldn't have too much bind if any at all so um, this should really work so I'll cut the tacks off those we'll lift these um, rear radius rods up once we get this tacked into place then we can tack those in we'll do it the other side and then we can kind of remove this rear end finish off the um, internal and external um, drive shaft uh, I have the sleeve made for that now so I can do the inside the main um, drive shaft itself then I can finish welding the torque tube um, once that's done then I can install the everything into the gearbox that I need to do with the um, fork and shaft and then I can put the other motor in so that we can mock up the radiator so right now I'm just gonna cut some more holes with the plasma cutter so I can gain access to the backside as you can see it's open right there or closed and um, and then we'll be able to weld this in and continue, continue ticking boxes. This was the original idea setup that I tried. Unfortunately, it does kind of taper down as well, so it's already got load like I had mentioned. Um, I liked aesthetically how they both matched, 
um, the front and rear radius rod, it looked good, but there was a little bit of binding. Um, vertically, I had it lined up with the pivot, but horizontally, it was down a little bit. So it was actually kind of doing like this motion. So when this was pivoting, the transmission mount, like when the suspension was articulating, it was actually kind of going like that. So on the other side, mind the mess of so many welders and stuff, but now this is what we got. Really nice plane. It's actually not perfectly level yet. It's actually sitting kind of up, which is good. So that when my fat sits on the seat, it'll actually come level. And then what we've done is I've welded the bung right into the side of the frame. We have access to it from the back side. And it's um, yeah, tacked into place now. And this is perfectly in line, like I said, vertically and horizontally with the pivot. So I've already noticed it. Like you can lean on that side and it, the suspension articulates really smoothly. And on that side, it's tight. So we're gonna do the other side, make sure everything's perfectly square again and we'll um, weld in the other bung, get the hole cut out, and uh, tick this job off. Well, the best thing about that, changing those rear radius rods, is now there is no bind. Like, before, when you would push down on this, you could like feel it, like it just didn't seem smooth. Sorry for the squeaky shackles. Um, but yeah, and now it's, you know, it's super fluid. There's no movement in the actual transmission mount itself. Before it was like wanting to push forward. So I'm, I'm super stoked with that. Um, I'm really happy that I just kind of went and, and um, you know, finished that off. So that was, that was big. We got basically the entire fuel tank set up, finished off, um, the bars mounted, the cowl struts, um, like, uh, I don't know, steering hoop, strut, whatever you want. Anyways, the, basically that whole, uh, steering setup is now like complete and tight um, just got to do a few more welds on it and yeah we have a place where the seats gonna sit it's you know everything's kind of structurally there in the future you know maybe tie something in don't know but for now we ticked two major three major um, bits off the list so I'm really really happy with that so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video um, I was really excited to use that, that World War II oxygen tank. I think it was just such a neat piece. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's so suitable for what it is. And it looks like I have R R2-D2 behind me, so I must be C-3PO. On next week's, we will be doing, um, I'm putting the motor in and gonna be doing the radiator. And then after that is pedals. And then once pedals are finished off, like, basically everything mechanically is going to be finished which is amazing so that's going to be a huge step and then i'll just finish off doing some more sheet metal work on that body and ideally what i would like to do is have um, the skin the way i've been pulling it on and off i want to be able to do that while it's like painted and so 
if I have any issues with anything, I can just kind of pull it off and, and I'm, you know, just got the bare bones um, the way it is, which would be really neat. So even just for like kind of giving it a shakedown test and everything, it'd just be great to just drive it like this. So I want everything to be kind of connected. Um, uh, and then, you know, basically the only thing you just slide the arm out for the pitman arm and then you're able to take the body off, slide it back in, lock it up. You're good to go. So that's super simple. So we'll see you next Sunday for another video. And um, we only have 19 days left. So I'm going to have to make a miracle happen to get this thing finished. Like and subscribe, hit notifications. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next week with heaps more done on this. So we'll see you then.